Good morning YouTube. I'm testing out a new recording program to see how how it uh what kind of a job it does. Anyway, uh right now we're uh, selling power as you can see here. Generating uh six point six one kilowatts from the panels, sticking one point one kilowatts back into the grid. My current house load is 0.76 kilowatts. I love how this Optics RE software works, where it basically gives you a, a flow chart that shows you from the panels into the inverter, down into the battery, and then from there, where it distributes to. This is the generator, but that's offline. Uh, these are today's current totals, 28.4 kilowatts of solar created at offsets by 31.4 pounds of CO2, which to the greenies, I'm pretty sure they love that. Make sure they give me a donation. Uh, we've sent 3.1 kilowatts to, back to the grid. We've taken from the grid 5 kilowatts. That starts at midnight going forward, so probably at, in the middle of the night somewhere. The system grabs, <clears throat> grabs some of that and, you know, keeps me floating. Yeah, you can see kind of where it took place. 2 a.m. through 7. And then I got a little more around 11. But, you know, more than that, during the day I don't ever have that issue because the sun can basically sustain this entire system. And this is my secondary system. This is the PIP 4024. You can also see a similar flowchart, not as, not as detailed as the Optics RE, but it shows the utility input, the solar input. This is the load being powered by the battery. This is the battery being powered by the solar. Right now there's no AC coming in to you know, to interface anywhere, so it's not costing anything. These are various, you know, readings. Working, of course, in the U.S. at 60 hertz. Bringing in 7.8 or 78.5 volts off those panels. And 1,745 or so watts currently. My battery bank voltage is 26.9. This is a 24 volt system. The other one, the Optics RE system, through the Radian is 48 volt. Uh, we're bringing in 42 amps. This basically gets converted via MPPT, and then the amps get upgraded. You know, it brings down the voltage from, I guess, the string voltage is about 110. So it reduces that down to whatever the battery voltage is and it increases the amps that you can use or that's available to you to charge those batteries. Right now we have no discharge. Uh, the load itself is about 595 watts on average. And I mean, there's no way I can make that lower, unfortunately, because that transformer takes a lot of power just to to run in its, you know, standard quiescent state. So, unfortunately, you always had a 500 watt, you know, draw on that device. But that's the price you pay to use a 240 volt European inverter. And it doesn't have split phase. So, if you want split phase, you have to run it through a transformer. When you run it through that transformer, you end up with that kind of a loss. But, you know. Make sure that that's your secondary system and don't worry about it. I mean, if you look at it realistically, it's 13% of the entire available power of this inverter system, which is 4,000 watts. So not, not terrible. As I said, it runs, uh, my entire garage, my, uh, file server that's on constantly, you know, uh, refrigerator, uh, freezer, a bunch of other little things, you know, that Otherwise would be running off my main system and drawing and leaching from that So if I have the secondary system and those 2.4 kilowatts of panels Why not take advantage of them and let them you know, do something? So that's what they're doing 
this is their software. I mean, it's neat, basic and generic, but it's free. So, you know, who's going to complain really? Anyway, back to the main guy. This is so much neater. I mean, the fact that it has the hot spots on the screen that by moving the mouse over, you can see that 2,900 watts is coming in on one charge controller, 3,700 watts is coming in on a secondary. Uh, this is a, these are your shunts. The Outback Radian load center has three shunts inside that measure voltage across them. So you're looking at, you know, like 36.4 amps going out to loads and bringing in 53.3 on one and 66 on the other. And as you, as you know, with the uh, Flexmax 80 charge controllers, they can bring in 80 amps each, you know, even actually more than that. So long as you change that one breaker, the uh, GFCI breaker that comes with the load center is an 80 amp breaker. Change that out to one of the midnight 100 amp GFCI breakers, and that will allow these controllers to go to their maximums, you know, which will well exceed 80 amps. I've had them go up to 91 amps, you know, sustained, and they did not trip that breaker. So uh, Outback needs to take a page out of Midnight's book when it comes down to breakers, and they should automatically give you that breaker when you buy those systems. So anybody getting an Outback Radian 8048 system, make sure that you get the Midnight uh, 100 amp GFCI breaker. It's a dual pole breaker. Make sure you get that. It's about $100, but it's well worth the money because there's nothing worse than having your system break or the trip takes place at 10 o'clock in the morning and you're not home and all day long you've literally lost all that solar production because once that breaker trips there will be no more solar production until you reset it so as i said make sure you get that breaker other than that i think uh i think everything is looking good you know, just moving right along. You see this little gap here. This took place because, I don't know, I think I took one of the systems offline. And since there was no internet connectivity at that time, you lost this information. It, it wasn't able to track it. So that's why you see this gap in between these two. Whatever. Uh, other than that, everything else looks good. You can always go back and forth you know, and see what yesterday was like, noticing the curve of state of charge, how the batteries do their thing. It's like a big roller coaster. During the day, they charge up. After hours, when the sun's gone, they start to discharge. Uh, today, to bring us back to reality, you can individually see what charge controls are doing, how the battery is performing, the inverter itself, and then a full summary of, of everything. All right, if you notice, my load just went up to 2.63 kilowatts. So this system is designed to sell excess power. When it determines that a load is higher than standard, 2.6 being higher than standard for whatever reason, it will switch to a buy mode to assist the system in handling it. Once that load goes back down to a regular, you know, under a kilowatt load, it switches back to selling mode. So, I mean, not much power is, is used in that time frame, but it does stop the sell until such time as that load comes back into a, into a normal range. I wish that Outback allowed you to configure what that should be because personally I wouldn't even want the assist from the AC I would just like the batteries I have a, ba a large enough battery bank where I should be able to you know control and let the batteries handle that load that two point some odd kilowatt hours is nothing to my bank so it should be able to just go ahead selling and at the same time you know uh, handling that increase until such time as that increase drops back down Anyway, uh, just forget to give you guys an overview of, of what Optics RE looks like. 
you know, how you can tell what's going on. Oh, there it is again. I think, yeah, this, this must be the, uh, either the washing machine, you know, just popping up and, and cycling as it does, you know, it only does it periodically. It's a lot worse with the dryer. The dryer is a four, you know, kilowatt device. So when you, uh, running that dryer to get to temperature, it'll take four kilowatts immediately. And then once it's temperatured or at temperature, it drops the load down to just standard, whatever it takes to tumble that, that, you know, the, the motor itself. And then as the temperature drops, it'll automatically increase again to bring it back up to the dryer temperature that you set. And throughout the entire hour of that process going on, it's back and forth. So, you, you know, dryers are the end of, of batteries when it comes down to inverters. You definitely, if you don't need to put a dryer on your system, do not do it. It's the same as an electric oven. You know, you put these two devices on, you are literally looking at, you know, at nighttime, you know, when there's no sun production to make up that loss, you will be looking at a dead flat battery pack because of those devices. So you either utilize them during the day or you basically don't put them on your system. I understand that hot water tanks that require electricity are the same way. I happen to have propane, so I don't care. But if you can keep those high drain devices off your system, it's probably a real good idea to do it. Anyway, uh, just figured I'd give you guys a little update. Again, uh, you know, like and share on my uh, YouTube channel. I'd like more people to see it. I want everybody to get solar. I want to be able to, you know, make sure that there is no one who has no power in a situation such as a hurricane or bad weather or whatever the case may be. You know, these are all controllable things. They are very easy to install. And with the right guidance, you can have a system that will maintain your house, your lifestyle, and, you know, keep, keep the lights on, keep those fridges cold so that your family can have, you know, the food and the medicine and any other thing that they might need and require during a grid down kind of a scenario. Anyway, thanks again. And, uh, make sure to comment. You know, I'd like to read your feedback and see what you guys think and, any improvements that I can come up with, I will definitely try it. Uh, that's about it. 77 degrees down here in sunny Florida. And I'll talk to you guys soon.